Welcome. The brother asked me to make a cover for this machine and uh, I've decided to do a casting because it will be quicker to get the, all the shapes and stuff uh, more or less in line. So all I really need to do or things that's the really precision would, would be the whole pattern. Now I'm not sure whether this cover should be closed all the way or whether there's a little slot that should be open you can drop a comment if you know the answer to that question the, the cast will cover the entire hole or the surface here and uh, depending on the feedback that I get back from you uh, I'll either mull it short or not so I hope you enjoy this This will be the mold that I'll be using. Now this mold, the way I made it, uh, I've drawn up, uh, I took rough measurements on uh, the veneer, the caliper, and then uh, made it drawing up in uh, Fusion 360, printed the, the outline and put the machine on top of it. Having a look at where the positions are uh, sitting and all the deviations I was able to measure and then make adjustments on the program until I got it spot on. So I'm not sure how much of shrinkage I'm going to get. I'll uh, do the cast and see. If it's a little bit thinner, say half a millimeter or a millimeter uh, side to side, it's not going to uh, bother me too much because the end goal is just to cover up the blade and the holes are sitting in very deep so it, it will uh, compensate for any shrinkage. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of pressure turning here. This thing that looks so rough, it's just a rubber that's around a, a piece of aluminium tube. Now I'm using it, so it's going to give me a lot of friction here. And the face plate itself will also provide a lot of friction, so hopefully everything will be fine. As you can see, I've got a boring bar here. Because I'm going to cut in the first couple of millimeters close to the center. And then after that, uh, while this is still in here, I'm going to clamp the part on the outside and do the remaining bits. And the boring bar is going to give me clearance over the bolts and the clamps that I've got here. Hope it makes sense. Okay, I'm going to take uh, my cuts at a very low RPM. It's, it's around uh, 160. I don't want to turn it fast because in case this thing flies out it doesn't do too much damage. And another thing is uh, I'm not sure whether this is zinc or pewter. 
It's definitely not aluminium, it's too heavy. Now, what I've done, I've taken letters and numbers that was cast, and I've melted them, uh, and I've chosen all the ones that had the same uh, color, color to it. Some of the stuff that I got was aluminium, and some is this mystery material. So I'm going to cut it and see what happens. It uh, is very abrasive resistant, so if maybe if what I've said gives you clues to what it is, drop a comment. Okay, the other side cleaned up good enough to get it uh, stuck to the face plate of super glue so that I can clean this uh, face up entirely without uh, using any pressure tanning because the pressure tanning is causing a bit of a, a bend in the plate because it's so thin but it's flat enough so that it will to register through to the uh, face plate so I'm going to clean up this side and then turn it back around when I'm done and do the other side again just a light skim cut on the back I must say this uh, material is, uh, leaves a very very good finish so I'm very happy with it
There's a little bit of shrinkage and inclusions visible here in this face here. But that's going to be on the inside of the uh, machine. So I'm not really too concerned about that. It's not going to be uh, visible. I don't want to take off any more on this face here because I need to... Uh, I only have got 0.1 millimeters left uh, to clean up the outside face. Uh, so I'd rather use it for that than to try and clean up the inside. Okay. I've removed the plate from the back plate with uh, the acetone. It took around five minutes and then it, uh, I just knocked it out with a soft play hammer. So as you can see it, there was rings left behind. Uh, the part shifted as I was pressure turning it. Uh, the center didn't uh, hold it good enough, so it shifted and it caused it to dig here. So that's why I've opted to go with uh, sticking it to the face with uh, super glue. That will uh, keep the tire surface uh, flat and uh, re remove any stress from the plate. So this will be my last cut in this face and then uh, it's just the holes that needs to be drilled afterwards. Okay, now got the plate cast and machined uh, flat both sides and it looks very well, very nice. Now I've, I've had a uh, chance yesterday to go and have a look at, at the machine on display and this cover in actual fact is plastic which uh, to me it's a bit dicey because if this plate comes loose for any odd reason then it's going to fly right through that plastic cover so I'm pretty confident the metal cover will be better. Now it sits very or fairly well and it's following the profile very closely and I'm happy with the way it looks. And what I've seen is on, on the uh, machines that they've got there, this cover goes up all the way up to this end here. So there's no gap. So why they didn't machine this end here right up to the shoulder, I don't know. It's a mystery. But anyway, there's four bolt holes. Now, you've got an odd shape uh, plate. Four bolt holes on this machine and no perfectly square edges, no way. So there is one of two ways that uh, you, you can do, the, or three ways. You can measure it if you really uh, uh, want to spend uh, two hours mapping out this profile and uh, trying to get it more or less uh, right or you can uh, if you can get a piece of paper that will stick it to, to the surface and punch the holes through and if you can get that piece of paper off and it doesn't uh, tear you should be okay 
or you can uh, transfer punch it so, uh, using uh, those little nibblets that you put in, into the uh, what's this name into the bolt holes but now say for argument's sake you lift it up and you've got a shape that's difficult to hold into position if you knock at this side and it moves for some reason you're gonna land up in the world of it now I'm gonna show you a fourth method and I think it's very easy uh, that requires the use of the DRO and it's gonna save me a lot of headaches okay let me show you as you can see I've got a quite an elaborate setup here as well put it down on my uh, milling pallet one to three blocks just to get this handle off the machine here of the table and at the back it's been strapped with edge clamp and what I'm going to do is I've got my center pin or center finding pin here in the machine hold on a second alright I've got it close to the machine here all you need to do is gonna bring it down with a fine feed just make sure around the sides that it's touching evenly because you can see the gap Once you're 100% sure that you've got it in position, okay, then you go to your DRO, go to your STM function, and you zero X and Y. That all is located. So now I'm going to move to the next hole. Because this machine is not uh, perfectly square on the, on my milling table, using the same, you get the flash on yeah, using the same coordinates is not going to work for the wire here. To back it out a little bit here. It's difficult to work with the camera in hand. All right, that one is done. Let's just go to SDM2, zero that, and I'm going to do the other two holes off camera, the other back, and then show the next steps. This DRO 
is is a must have. Got one of these machines is going to save you a lot of lot of time. And the labor that you save is going to make up for the cost of that DRO. As you can see, okay, I've placed my machinist jack underneath this uh, parallel clamp of mine. Prevent it because it was moving. Now this whole machine in the back is is rounded, and in the front where this bracket mounts to the machine is not very rigid. Okay, that's a center drilling done. So what I'm going to do now is take it out and uh, finish the, the holes up in the drill press. Because I'm not going to be able to fit in a, a full size drill in, in between the machine and, and this cover. So I hope it taught you something. Okay, all also lining up. And the cover is sitting very nicely. Now, I don't have the correct size screws for this. So my brother will need to source them. Now, I did countersink them for countersink bolts. It will just give it an, a nicer look. And this is not a 
surface of on the machine that's going to be used for location. That's what this uh, foot is here for, because your blade sits on this side. So there's no way that you use this in for any reference. So yeah, that in a nutshell, this job is done. I think it uh, will serve the purpose, and I think it looks good. Now, I don't know if the camera is doing it any justice, but uh, the surface finish on this plate with this metal is almost like cast iron. It behaves a lot like cast iron, except for the fact that it's uh, stringy. So it's, it's basically a combination of a low lot of uh, different materials, with different properties, all combined. So, we enjoyed this boat. It is, uh, in the beginning it was looking very tricky and I was wondering how I'm going to tackle this thing because uh, cutting it out of a hacksaw or with a grinder and filing it in, in, into spec was going, going to take a quite a long while and it wouldn't have nearly looked as nice as, as this plate does. So until next time, cheers!